So workflow is a really important part of being a photographer in this digital age. Um, I will not forget the ease of shooting a roll of slide film, um, taking it to the local professional lab, waiting a couple of days, picking it up, excited to see what there is or wasn't. Uh, and you know, spreading it out, spreading the slides out on the light table, and getting a loop and looking at them, and that was it. You know, end of story. Um, if you're going, if I was going to submit those images somewhere, then I needed to at least do some um, to print out the caption and my uh, copyright on a you know little sticky label and stick them on the slides. That was about the most difficult thing you had to do, really. And then that was that. So it's clearly a different world now. Um, workflow for me, I think, is a fairly simple one, but hopefully a robust one um, that works with the with the way that I do things. And of course, backing up is really important right from the beginning. And I hope most photographers do that. You never know when you've taken something that turns out to be you know, an award-winning image, but if you haven't backed it up and subsequently your hard drive goes down, you know, you've lost something that's irreplaceable. So uh, yeah, backing up at least initially, um, that's something that's a whole topic of its own to go into without you know, just, I think, putting, putting it out there as an important thing is, is, is enough for people to understand. Um, and then for me after that also, it's fairly simple. I use Adobe Light, Lightroom. Um, uh, all my images all get ingested by Lightroom. I convert them to a digital negative from the raw file, um, but I have the raw files backed up separately, so I still have access to those if that's what I want. And then um, I'm a fairly ruthless editor of those images initially. I'll get rid of anything that I just that just didn't work or doesn't speak to me, and so you know I, I'm left with a core group of images that I then work on. And I do 99% of any um, post processing in Lightroom. I don't go into Photoshop very much. Um, I know that's clearly different to other people, but I'm, I'm not someone who can spend too many hours on one image. In general, uh, I'm trying to capture the composition and the story with that initial image. Um, obviously, the raw file is going to look flat and, and you know, not really speak to the viewer, and so I'll, I'll post-process that in Lightroom using the normal things that people do, the normal processing tools that people use in Lightroom. Um, and then that's about it. Uh, I will... Um, if we go, you know, if we're talking Facebook and Instagram and social media and that sort of thing, um, I'll, I mean, I'll occasionally use an app within a social, with, within, you know, my iPhone to give a different look to the image, but I don't do that too often either. What I will do in Lightroom sometimes is I'll um, incorporate a bit of processing using the um, Visco, VSCO, Visual Supply Company, um, film emulsion looks for want of a better description, and I think I was attracted to those just because I, I did come from shooting uh, Velvia, um, Fuji Velvia slide film you know, originally, and so I do like a saturated, contrasty look to my images. And so um, Visco have, have produced some um, Lightroom processing apps that, that give that look a little bit, but I'll still fiddle with those to, to get them. Mm, I'm not happy with them all the time, so I'll still change them a bit. But that's about it really, nothing too extreme I don't think from my workflow and post-processing. Getting work published is something that really underpins my approach to photography. Um, as I said earlier, I'm very keen to get images out of my hard drive or off my hard drive and out into the world where they get published and seen. And so I think, um, you know, in terms of giving tips to others who want to get work published, um, there's a few different ways to go about doing that, but perhaps one of the first things to do is understand that uh, social media is not the be all and end all of where you want your images to be seen. That's clearly not published in my book. Um, and so you need to develop another outlet for the way that you go about showing people your images, getting people to notice your images. And that means establishing um, connections with, let's say for instance, stock agencies or a stock library. I have a connection with three different stock agencies and you know that requires a decent body of work to be accepted into um, that, that submitting group of people for an individual agency and, and that's just a matter of going out and, and uh, researching which agencies hold the sort of content that you shoot and um, putting together a body of work, submitting it to them. And of course, just the fact that you become a submitting photographer doesn't mean your work will get published, but there's a high chance it will if you're consistently shooting and submitting high quality work um, to an agency that actually has good connections in the area that you shoot, then you're gonna get stuff published. So that's one way of doing it. And the other side of, 
of getting work published obviously is to make direct connections with uh, editors um, and or ad advertising um, agencies, which is not something that I do, I'm not an advertising photographer and I don't I can't speak to that area particularly, but basically what I'm talking about is you need to make direct connections with people in the areas that you want to see your work published and then show them that you shoot good stuff, that you do it regularly, that you don't just shoot one-off interesting images, um, that you can do it repeatedly, that you respond to emails, that you communicate well, and all the other basis, all the other um, uh, things that go along with, with establishing that you can run a photographic business, I guess. You know, it, it's easy for someone like me who I think, uh, you know, shoots professional level images, but um, I don't go about pretending that I have a full-time business running uh, uh, from a photography perspective. Um, but I know people who do and I know how that side of things works and the reality is if you want to do well and get stuff published and seen um, as a photographer then you need to go about that in a very professional way and, and really establish a business approach to things. If I had my time again, if I was able to give myself some advice uh, when I was younger, actually there's probably a couple of things I would say. One is look after your knees. I, um, I'm only 49 and I'm already starting to struggle with my joints and maybe that's because I played AFL football. Well, it wasn't AFL when I played it, but uh, when I played Australian rules football, um, I copped a few injuries and that, that um, you know, is coming home to roost even though I don't do any running or, or real high joint stuff, high joint impact stuff these days. You know, I'm active as a photographer and I want to stay active and that means um, looking after yourself as you go through life, I think. So that's a bit of advice for the young fellas out there and women. Um, and then um, apart from that, I think one thing I didn't do when I was younger, particularly from a photographic point of view, was ask more questions of those who knew more than I did. You know, um, having a real awareness of the possibilities out there sometimes requires taking advice from other people and having a real inquiring mind um, and, you know, learning from those around you. And I was, I was always keen and excited to see what people were doing, but I don't think I did have a, a very good job of asking questions and getting advice and hearing what other people thought about maybe the way I could do things differently or better or, yeah, that sort of thing. So just opening up your mind to the possibilities out there in the creative world is not something I did very well, I don't think. I'd, I'd do it better now uh, and it's not too late to still learn and, um, and get a lot better at what I'm doing. So, yeah, but the earlier you can do that, the better.